Praise the Lord, everybody. God is great and he is so worthy of praise. He's worthy of all the honor and he is worthy of all the glory. Mm, he brought us safely here to the house. Mm. My, 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 he woke you up this morning. You were closed in your right mind. Mm, you had the activities of your limbs. And we can freely praise God on today. Amen. 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 We, we just thank God for all, for our members, for our visitors, for just everybody being in God's house on today. On behalf of Pastor and Lady Cobb and the Oak Grove NBC Church family, we do greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. We greet those who are here in the sanctuary and those who are watching via our cyber sanctuary. Mm, God is just mm -mm good. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. He's just mighty good. He's just mighty good. Amen. Y'all feeling all right today? It's homecoming. Amen. We thank God for bringing us through another year that we can celebrate homecoming. Amen. 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 We are going to have the praise team come and do an opening selection, followed by our worship declaration by Deacon Ray. I will follow with prayer, and we're just going to have a good time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, praise team.
been too good. We owe him all the honor and the glory. For that, we all should say just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will be reciting 100 songs together. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing, knowing ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. God word is already blessed. Teach us how to speak to 
someone might say, hey, when they are giving it to us. This is how they want to know us, new God, and know your people. God, I take away all of them, take away all of those that are gathered around this altar, and God, consume it, fire, and destroy it, God, and we will only abide in your spirit. There's no more of us, God. We surrender today, God. We give our all to you, Teach us, God. Keep us, God. Mature us in your ways, God. Even when we don't understand, God, that we will trust you that you will. But you said you would never leave us nor forsake us, God. You would have your children pay the bread, God. From the youngest to the oldest, God. Stir the gifts in your people, God. Let it be manifest, manifested in this place, God. That they will be coming from the north, the south, and the east, and the west, but God, I don't care how many come, God. Let them be saved, God. By like just getting on the ground, they will cry out, I sin against you, Father. Touch me, make me whole, God. Send me, God, on the tracks that I, on the path that I need to go. Because God has a purpose and a plan for everybody, Father. Everybody. He said there's plenty of good room. He said, come. Let me into your mind, into your spirit. Give him a, a intimate relationship with you. Not a religion, but an intimate Holy Spirit with you. And they can call upon you rather than their car, rather than their home, rather than their job. And expediently, God, you can answer my fire. And if you don't, God, we learn how to wait. We learn how to wait to you. We do not be deceived by the things of this world. But we be transformed by the renewing of our minds in you, Christ Jesus. That's all that matters, God. That we serve you and serve you alone. Let us surrender to you. Someone came to be saved. Someone came to be blessed. Someone came to be healed. Someone came by the Father because their hearts are heavy. And only you can fix them. So God, it's just little belly here standing this morning. Standing, God, and interceding for your people, God. Your people, not mine, and yours. That your kingdom come and your perfect will be done. Touch past the car, Father. You know, God, we have need of. You know what you're doing in this life, God. Teach us how to lift him up in prayer. Not just on Sunday, but every day. Him and his family, his wife, who stands holy with him, God. Anoint him afresh, anoint him. Ordained of God to do the work of the Father. Not looking back, God, but looking unto the hands on which they stand. We thank you today, Father. We thank you for this moment and this second and this time. Because we may not see it again. But God, the rock shall not cry out for me, God. The rock shall not cry out for your people. Transform us, God. Let us know. As Pastor Carl said, we pray for salvation. We pray that somebody will come in the midst of you and they will feel the presence of God and say, So what about you? And then God, you come and give an invitation like never before. God with a ram, God, as you did, God, with Abraham and Isaac, God, you were God the sacrifice. Then and you are now. Send unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is our prayer and our decree. Heal, deliver, and set free. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.
Sila you with the observation. Nominations for the Grove Avenue Hero Award are open. Today is the last day to submit your completed nomination form in the designated box located in the fellowship hall. Operation Count Me In 2024 is in full effect. Items may be dropped off at the church throughout the remainder of the month between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. each Sunday. Additionally, if you would like to donate, funds can be accepted via cash, check, or online via PayPal, Cash App, or Givelify. We're in the planning stages of preparing for our trunk and treat event. If you'd like to show your support by decorating your car, or perhaps donating candy, please see Sister Shelley Kimball as soon as possible. Additionally, if you are planning to bring your youth, please sign them up on the sign-up sheet and the fellowship call. Get ready for a remarkable evening of fun, food, and fellowship. The date will be held in the month of December. If you're excited to help plan this amazing event, please connect with Sister Nancy Thomas. The 157th Annual Session of the General Baptist State Convention will be held on October 28th through October 30th at the Hilton Raleigh Love Hills. Please see the flyer and the weekly email for more details. We're partnering with the Salvation Army for our annual church flight mission project. Starting now through December 15th, we invite everyone to donate needed items. Designated bins will be available in the fellowship hall. For more information, please reach out to Trustee Lisa Farrington. Light Up That the Church presents their youth explosion, which will be held on Saturday, October 26th at 3 p.m. Thought of the Week. Decide to be happy when you start your day. React with joy, whatever comes your way. You may be hurt by what people say, but don't let anyone spoil your day. Amen. Amen. Let's give our media a
We're certainly uh, grateful to God for those that showed up on Friday night and how the Lord blessed us in that service. Oh, we had a time here on a Friday night. Seeing if you all want to sing like that. If you all want to sing like that, we ain't going to take no breaks. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I was at home. Now that song, What If God Is Unhappy, is just, it just does something to me. Not because of the, the music, but the lyrics uh, of the song. And so uh, I was at home just playing, 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 playing. Uh, nonetheless, um, our, our praise team opened it up on a high note. And so, yeah, thank you all. Thank you, thank you. Amen. For what we did. That y'all did not perform Friday night. We don't believe in no performance. Uh, that's for a stage. That's for, amen, Broadway. This is the house of God. Amen. We do ministry here. So thank God for you all ministering and opening up. And the other, Emerge and also GJ Ministries that uh, did. We had a beautiful time on Friday. And thank you so much, all of you that were here uh, to be a part of that. And some perhaps could not be here for whatever reason. Thank you. Uh, also, by way of reminders, we just want to say we we'll continue to uh, collect items for the uh, relief effort in um, uh, Asheville. And let me just say this. Uh, we, of course, you see it on the news that FEMA and other groups are on the ground. However, there's still some need because there's some areas that are not, uh, they are underserved. And so uh, what we're asking you to do, we thank you. Let me just stop and say thank you uh, for those that have already brought water, uh, toilet paper, and all that um, uh, to, to be a blessing. And we're putting that uh, in an appropriate place so that uh, we can load up the U-Haul and, and take that. And we're, we're getting updates um, at least twice a week uh, from the pastors that are there. And uh, thank God that some of them now have water, uh, but they can only use it for flushing. And so, of course, they still need water. And so we want to be a blessing to them. And here's the thing someone may be saying, well, they may not need it as long as y'all take it. This is what I'm saying. Somebody going to need it. Amen. So we're going to keep doing what we're going to do. Amen. Uh, and we don't want to, we have not take, taken anything yet because we want to make sure that the roads are clear and that we're not in the way of, of that. And, and so certainly they are coordinating with those pastors there. And so I uh, want to say thank you. Some may not have given uh, the items, but some have given financially. Thank you so much. Um, and so if you can, um, let's, let's do what we can to help those brothers and sisters. Uh, there in Asheville um, as it could be us next and we want someone to help us and think about us when we are there amen and so uh, uh, if we get into that point so uh, please ma'am please sir we'll keep it going until and like I said we have not delivered it uh, some have inquired can I drop yes you can drop stuff off but we're just asking you to keep it limited to that what's on the flyer if you could keep it limited I know some of you want to bring you know furniture and, 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 and shoes and, and all this other stuff <laughs> Uh, but we're actually limited to what's on the list because that's what's primary for them right now. And so afterwards, maybe we could do something else. Um, but if you would do that as you've already been doing, uh, we would so greatly appreciate that. Again, we just want to say thank you again as we close out this year, this church year, um, on today. Amen. I am grateful to God for every supporter uh, of our church. Those, uh, and let me just say, we've got some covenant partners. I know we, we don't like to call people out. Uh, one of our covenant partners did some, uh, they're doing some lights and things on the outside. Uh, and we've got uh, Sister Hassan, and I'm not going to ask her to stand. I'm not going to call out. That's uh, Sister Bowden's sister. She is a covenant partner of our church. Yeah, we thank God for her. Yeah, we thank God for her. And what is a covenant partner? Somebody saying, why are you call? These are individuals that they don't, uh, they're not members here. Uh, they don't want to be buried here. They, you, know, they, you know, some people do stuff with an ulterior motive. They say amen if you can, uh, but they just give and they support, and we don't take that lightly when people get because they can go do it something else with it. Amen. I because they, they go to Walmart, Sam's, uh, and whatever else uh, to do that. Amen. So thank you, amen, for all of our covenant partners and all of our provides. You that tie, you that pay your offering. Thank you so much, amen. Toilet tissue costs, paper towels costs, these lights costs. Amen. And so our tithes and offering is what keeps things afloat. And so I will say to you, um, if you are not a tithe, I've learned uh, that if you don't tithe, God's going to get his money one way or another. And I'm a witness. I was at that share with my, uh, uh, I believe it was, my, my, no, maybe I was just, you know, sometimes I, you just talk to someone, you just talk to uh, <laughs> uh, But I, you make sure what you talk about. Uh, 
but I remember some years ago, and I'm just saying this to encourage, because I ain't always been a tithe. Now y'all sitting there like y'all been tithing all y'all lives. We ain't always been good tithers. You sit down on your pew for 50 years, you ain't always tithe like you're supposed to. And some of us still don't tithe like we're supposed to. But my point is, I remember a few years ago, and I say this and as I allow Vance Sims to come forth, uh, that uh, we were in a tight place and, you know, what the income was was different uh, from what the, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, and as far as what the bills were. And so how do you tithe when you don't have enough? How do you tithe when, 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 when what you're making, the, I ain't talking about luxury, I'm just talking about lights, yeah. rent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I ain't no children, I won't marry just me. And uh, I had to have a conversation with God about that. And I had a conversation with uh, a pastor. And uh, I, I, I told the Lord then, I said, if you get me out of this season, I said, I will make sure. Now, now here's the thing, this is before I started passing, how long was that ago? Uh, you know, don't worry about that. Uh, I'm just saying to you is uh, when I went through that season, I was saying uh, doing the best that I could, but times just got tight. And I had to figure out whether, you know, pay the light bill or whether not to come. Okay, I'm, I'm, some of y'all are so, I'm just real. <laughs> if you ain't never been there, God bless you. But if you ever get there, when you try to figure out, do I pay this light bill or do I pay my tithe? And so I said, Lord, I said, you have to help me. And the, bro and the pastor told me, he said, now, brother, listen, uh, God give you sense to understand that if you don't have it, now I ain't telling you what, I ain't telling nobody what to do. I'm just telling you what worked for me is, 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 is if you cannot pay what you desire. Now, I didn't say, now notice I didn't say I didn't pay nothing. I said I didn't time like I wanted. I, let me put this up. I was paying something, but not like I would desire to. And so what the brother told me, he said, this is what you do. Tithing is not just of your money, but it's also of your time. Yeah. And so what I did was I stepped up in my time. And so because of that, what I did was, and, and the Lord blessed me so much so, Evangelist Sims, that uh, before I knew it, uh, the Lord had blessed me in the income. And, and I, I, you know, I've been on the right road since then. My point is, I want to say to us today, uh, for, for those of us that don't understand what tithing is, is that if when we tithe, we go into partnership and fellowship with God. And when you refuse to tithe, you're out of fellowship with Him. And so some of us, I, I believe I got about five of you that'll say this. I ain't saying it because it's homecoming. And you don't have to pay nothing. God gonna get it one way or another. Uh, but some of us can bear witness that we can afford, we cannot afford not to tithe. Okay, I got heard one, two, okay, three. Are you, 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 when you get to the point with God, you understand I cannot afford not to tithe because God's going to get his dollar one way or another. And so with that being stated, I'm saying that inflation is high, gas is high, and all this other stuff is high. But let's keep doing what we're doing. You all have done a great job. Uh, and it's not everybody, but those that are tired, and you know if you're tired or not. Uh, thank you so much for keeping uh, this church afloat. Uh, the food is in the back, and it's hot. And so we, uh, we, we I know that's where some of our minds is um, on that. But I, would, I just want to stand. This is the last time that we'll stand before we go into this uh, new year. Thank you for all of your support to our church. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep showing up. If nobody ever says they appreciate you, I appreciate you for what you do for our church. Amen? amen. All right. Amen. At this time, we're going to call for uh, our evangelist. She will facilitate our off tour declaration as the Lord has blessed us. Amen? amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for prayer.
We're going to ask those that can stand if you will stand on those blessed feet. And if you will get your time envelope, your offering envelope, your device in your right hand because we give right. And if you will repeat after me, I decree and declare, I decree and declare that every offering, seed and love give by so will manifest Every blessing, Every blessing you have in store for me. Store for me. I, place I place a demand on my seed. And by faith receive. By faith receive lost souls saved. Lost soul saved and open heaven. And open earth, heaven divinely invaded, earth divinely invaded. Storehouse unlocked. Storehouse unlocked miracles, created, miracles created. Declarations. declarations visitation, visitation. And divine manifestations. Positions and, positions and promotion, loans approved, loans approved. Debt, removed. debt removed, checks in the mail, in the mail. marriages and restored marriages, and restored marriages. Medical, needs medical needs met, children protected and covered, children protected provisions, and provisions and resources, complete restoration, restoration. in every area in every that concerns me. It is, so, it is so, and so it shall be, so it shall be. in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask if you will turn and face the wall and come around.
for you to give God praise. Hallelujah. First of all, because he woke you up this morning. He clothed you in your right mind. One song, and then Pastor, 
Lord Jesus, have mercy. All I'm going to tell y'all, hold on to your seats. Come on, praise team.
you being everything that we need. All that we need is in Jesus. Oh, and you supply. Thank you for your joy, your peace. And oh, God, how you walk us in your arm, even when we sing. Oh, God, to be at our wit's end. We thank you for giving us renewed strength. God, we can tell the world today that we didn't make it on our own. We didn't make it on our education, our social status. But God, we made it because you've been good to us. And we thank you for being who you are. You're everything. We thank you for where you brought us from, where you have us right now, where you're taking us to. And God, we know that the best is still yet to come. So God, we speak and we declare, declare over our own lives. Oh, God, that we're stepping into new territory. God, we're stepping into, oh, God, untapped and untapped potential. Knowing that God we can do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. So, God, we thank you for another year that you've allowed these church doors to stay open. Many churches have shut down. But, God, we want to say thank you for keeping old, old, old pro doors open. Not because of us, but because of who you are. And we magnify your name. So God, as you kept this physical building open, help us to be the church. Help us to be that call out group that you're calling for these last people days. Bless this time that we shall share the word of God. That you would not decrease me and you would increase the more. That you get the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. Let's get the Lord's
lessons from the next. Amen. So in case your neighbor has um, um, kind of drifted off already, uh, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. Uh, maybe that neighbor, maybe you were the one that was sleeping and wake you up. Uh, okay. so somebody else say neighbor. Neighbor. Oh neighbor. Oh, neighbor. There are some lessons. That we can learn from the nets. Uh, so normally, God bless you, uh, Sister Claudette. Amen. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, we go way, way back. Uh, yeah, amen. We just thank God for everybody. Give, give yourself a hand. That. Give, give, give yourself a hand. Yeah. 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 Some of y'all, yeah. that's the hand that you're going to give yourself. That's what I'm talking about. Let, 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 let's try it one time. Give yourselves a hand. Give yourselves a hand because you're still here. You're still alive. You're still breathing. Still able to walk. Still able to talk. Give yourself a hand. Yeah. Thank God. Not only when we don't start at the other, but when, when preachers or theologians of the gospel head to Luke chapter 5, they highlight what we should highlight, we highlight the fact that Jesus is doing some teaching in this text. Uh, this pericope is replete and overflowing with preaching material, and I'm amazed, Brother Demetrius, because if you lean in into the text, you will hear Jesus' teaching voice. Uh, he walks up on some fishermen, uh, Mother Denny, who have been out on the lake of Gennesaret, better known as the Sea of Galilee, and to their dismay, they have been there all night and caught nothing. And so Jesus uh, does what only Jesus can do. He asked him, can you push out of the boat uh, the one that you've been in all night long and completely failed and did absolutely nothing with? In other words, he says, uh, what he's asking is, uh, can I stand in the place of your last failure so that I can preach to the people who are listening to me on the shore? Okay, but y'all didn't catch that. Y'all didn't catch that. Okay, they're in the boat. They ain't caught nothing. And Jesus says, uh, he steps into the boat, and he says, uh, he goes to the place where they failed, where they have caught nothing. And he says, let me stand in your failure so that I can reach some. Sometimes God will use you not in a place from success, but from a place of failure. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, catch me if you can. I'm the gender red man. Some scholars suggest that Jesus wanted to be on the lake because it was something about being on the water. It turned the lake into a first century sound system. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it had been suggested that the waves of the water would literally carry his voice onto the banks of the lake, and people who were straining to hear him on the land could hear him better because he was preaching on the water. Now we see that no proof in the text, but that's what some scholars believe. It's amazing that Jesus chose to stand in the boat because the place of their last failure was the boat. Uh, and people of God, only Jesus can transform your past failure into a platform so that people can hear God's word. Here you are ashamed of what you've gone through. Here you are embarrassed of what didn't work out. And what I've discovered is that the very thing that God uh, can use to help other people or that didn't work for you, that messed up for you, that didn't work so well for you, God can use that, amen, and reach somebody else so they can hear God's word uh, in the place of your last film. Mm. Can, can't nobody teach, can't nobody teach like Jesus. Jesus will use lilies to preach on or to teach on preservation. He'll use birds to teach about provision. He'll use rocks to teach about praise. Somebody looking at me like, uh, what are you talking about? One day when he was trying to teach about provision, he said, consider the birds. Uh -huh. They don't have a coastal federal credit union. Mm -hmm. They don't have a Wells Fargo. They don't have a Truist or 401k. But yet your heavenly father feeds them. Aren't you not more worthy than the birds just because uh, uh, yeah, that Jesus could use words to teach about provision? In other words, he said that if God can take care of birds that don't have nothing, then here you are, how much more will God take care of you if you'll take care of a bird? Okay, and if you say, huh, I don't know what you're talking about, but that's provision. And he'll turn and say, and take a lily. He'll say, look at the lilies in the field, in the field, and, and Solomon with all of his grandeur and glory could not outdress those lilies. I don't care if you've been to Belk. I don't care if you've been to Neiman Marcus. You, you still cannot dress better than the lilies that God preserves out in the field. And then one day he wanted to teach on praise. And so when he talks about preservation, he teaches about the lilies. He says that he, that he covers and he protects the lilies. Amen. And I know that the lilies 
you do. I can't worry about what's going on in my life. I can't worry about what you're not doing. But my responsibility is to grow in Jesus. And so he uses, uh, he uses the birds to talk about provision. Then he uses the lilies, hallelujah, to talk about, uh, as, he, as he continues to talk about the preservation. And, uh, and then one day he wanted to teach about some praise because it was Palm Sunday. And the people were enjoying the presence of Jesus coming in on that donkey. They were shouting because of what they seen and what they heard. And some of the leaders got irate and said, Jesus, wait a minute. You got to stop. You got to stop. You got to stop. You got to stop them because we don't want the rulers in the kingdom thinking that they're trying to make you the new king. Yeah. He was already king. Yeah. King in the form of a servant. But then they say, Jesus, you got to stop. Okay, bro, uh, don't get nice, okay? But you got to stop these folks from doing it because them folks up there in City Hall don't think they're trying to make you the king. Here you talking to God in the flesh saying, shut your mouth because them folks up there. Y'all get this picture. And, and so, so they say, Jesus, you got to stop the folks from, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the, the praise portion. Just wait a second. Uh, he said, you got to stop them people from doing so much uh, because uh, they, if they keep on, uh, they're going to think uh, that they're trying to make you the new king. And Jesus says, the problem is, if I stop them, if they shut their mouth, then the rocks are going to start crying out. Mm -hmm. Jesus will use some rocks to teach about praise, lilies, to teach about preservation and birds, to teach on provision. Can't nobody teach like Jesus. Notice his teaching voice in the text. Notice Jesus asked, he, put, he asked the question, he said, push out a little, let me the church say little, uh, from the shore. Then he, later he asked them to go out into the deep. Let me hear the church say deep. Mm -hmm. And if you can't trust him to do something little, then you can't trust him to do something big. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot fall into greater uh, until you become big enough to do something little. And the problem with some of us is that we want to be so big, but if you're too big to do something little, then you're too little to be something big. Okay, uh, let me say that again. Uh, you cannot fall into greater until you become big enough to do something little. And the problem with some of us is that we want to be big, but if you're too big to do something little, then the reality is you're too little to do something big. Uh, you'll only do, you'll only do uh, what we do, we only do uh, what we do when we hear Jesus' voice while teaching. But if you lean in, and not only do we hear his voice, but we lean in a little bit closer, don't lean in all the way, uh, but lean in just enough uh, to hold up yourself, uh huh? Uh, don't put all your mm -hmm. uh, so so if you lean in just a little bit closer, you'll hear not only Jesus' teaching voice, but Peter's tired voice. Mm. After Jesus finishes his lesson, um, his pedal his pedagogical uh -huh, uh, set up for the uh, people listening on the banks. He looks at Peter and says, now that you pushed a little out on the water, this time I want you to launch out into the deep and get ready, verse 4, it's all Bible, get ready for a catch. Okay? Peter says, Master, uh, we've been working all night. I pulled, you know, I worked eight and I pulled uh -huh, some extra hours, I worked some overtime, no doubt uh, while Peter said this to Jesus, where well, we can hear it and see it in the text, uh, no doubt in his mind he was saying something else that we could not hear. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and while Peter was perplexed for a moment, what he had to remember was that while he caught the fish, Jesus is the one who made the fish. Church folks don't know when to shout. Uh, Peter says, we've been out all night long. And have nothing to show for it. I believe someone listening to me has felt like Peter. You've been in some relationship and caught nothing. They even got on some apps caught nothing. Started a business and caught nothing. The fact of the matter is some of you becoming exhausted because you're tired of people letting you down. You're tired of people exhausting you. You're tired of meeting people with love, attention, and affection. And none of that is reciprocated to you. And if you be honest, somebody in this room will testify and say, I'm saved, but I struggle. I'm a worshiper, but I worry. I have faith, but I do get frustrated. I'm a believer, but I do get burned. I'm a teacher of the word, but I get tired. And so when we hear Jesus teaching in voice, when we hear Jesus a tired voice, then we've got another voice. So Jesus is saying, catch me, you know, brother, go out into the deep. Peter said, I'm tired. We've been working. Uh, but then there's another voice that we hear in the text. 
where, 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 where customer service seems to be going on all time. Look, that's why whenever, let me just throw this in, for you that are a little cheap, you know, because some of us are a little cheap, you know, a little cheap on the little cheap side, we always talk about what ain't right. Whenever you go to a restaurant and you got a good way to tip them good. And complain and complain about waiters. Cow ain't no good waiters. They didn't bring me out. Look, they let my glass get half full. They didn't come and ask me. They don't ever cut. They didn't go to help somebody else. Then you go to a table where that person, I mean, they busting a sweat and you leaving two dollars. Church don't like when you tell them to. But if you're going to complain about when service is bad, you ought to appreciate when service is good. Okay, let's move on here. All right. Okay. Uh, the next say, the next say, so consider the service. The next say, get this, get this. The next say, uh, the great, I don't shine in my best when I'm in the pub. Yeah. But rather, I shine my best when nobody can see me. Mm. And so I have, to, I have to become comfortable with serving while nobody's able to see what I can really do because I function at my highest capacity under water. Nobody sees what I can really do, so they may not appreciate the gift I am because I'm serving in a place that they can't see. This is what happened. We done served the Lord another year, and some of y'all, child, I ain't going back up there. Uh -uh, I ain't doing nothing else because don't nobody ever say thank you. Don't know that they, they, they recognize everybody else. Everybody else got a car. Everybody else, they told them to stand up. They high five everybody else. They got a gift, and I saw what they got a gift, and they didn't give one. Stop looking for the applause of other people and look for the applause from the Lord. Because folks will deliberately not clap for you. Yeah. Because ain't nobody clapping for this. <laughs> uh, but the next say, next say this. I work my best because uh, in the water. Nobody sees what I really do. So they may not appreciate the gift I am because I'm serving in a place that can't be seen. I'm used to, get this, I'm talking about next. And I'm usually used at my highest capacity when it's dark. Right. And I'm used at the highest capacity where it's because the Sea of the Galilee, the Sea of Galilee was 141 feet deep. And so I served in the dark. I served in the deep. And I'm not at, I'm, I'm not at my highest capacity until I get dropped. A gnat isn't affected until it gets dropped. Right. Y'all will catch what I said. Some of y'all worry about who dropped you back in February, child. God can't use you sometimes until you get dropped. Oh, <laughs> let, me, let me talk to me. Oh, you're okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, next, next, uh, uh, they're not useful until they get dropped. Uh, let me see here. So they serve in the dark. They serve in the deep. Uh, and they're not useful until they get dropped. I'm in the dark and I disappear out of people's sight. And I act, it's not until then that I actually become what I was initially formed and fashioned to be. And someone listening to me has been wondering, why is it so dark? Why is it so deep? And you're upset because people dropped you. But the truth is, you got to learn how to rejoice. Not only when life, life lifts you up, but you got to rejoice when life lets you down. You ain't your best when you're let down. Anybody think of what a people that only those that know the Lord can attest to this. Because you can't attest to this until you really know who he is. I ain't talking about salvation, but I'm going to tell you what I know. Ah, uh, only those that really know who Jesus is can appreciate the fact that you are faithful when folks let you down. That's why, yeah, you hear one hand clap because some of y'all don't like that. But but I thank God for the ones that let me down. Didn't feel good when I went through it, but I thank you for letting me down. Because if you never let me down, I couldn't catch them. You supposed to play some shopping music right there. I'm trying to tell you, God can't use you until you are dry.
Consider the egg. Eggs in the refrigerator. And Felicia comes home. Uh, I know how to boil the eggs, so don't try to And she says, you won't. Uh-huh. Egg in a refrigerator hole ain't doing us no good. She has to take the egg, beat it up against something, and let the yolk drop. It's ineffective until that yolk drops into the pan. Call what I said. Some of you need to understand that the reason why you've been broken is because God wants to take you and get out of you what's effective. So, oh, I wish I had an egg. I'm trying to tell you, and you see that complaining. Complaining. And I was thinking about this last night, and I said, oh, Lord, I had to try to take it. Uh, because the egg is ineffective until it's cracked. But what comes out of the egg is greater than on the outside. On the outside, you're looking at that beautiful egg child, that beautiful brown egg for bacon. But it ain't until you crack that egg that is useful to you. Some of us thank God that you didn't crack so he can bring out the best in you. Yeah. All right, so point number one was the second service of the next. Uh, so I want to just say congratulations. Congratulations on your darkness. Congratulations on your deep season. Congratulations on your latest drop. Because you're about to have a net full of fish. Uh, a net full of blessings. If you can only be who God wants you to be in the dark, in the deep, after you get drunk. So you got to be content to serve when people can't see. I don't care if I'm a net, as long as I'm catching something, it's good with me. I know that's right. Point number two, notice, uh, notice the success strategies of the nets. The success strategies of the nets. The disciples were out there all night and didn't catch anything, but the net says, here what the net says, even after the night of catching, absolutely nothing, positively nothing. Guess what? Guess what? Somebody say what? 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 <laughs> after they, they, they caught nothing, all night long, Peter said, did y'all hear what Peter said? Master, we've been out here all night long, we ain't caught nothing. Yeah. Here's what the next said. He said, psst, God. I said, what? He said, God, guess what? Even though they didn't catch nothing, guess what? Even whether something is inside of me or not, I'm still a net. Amen. Okay, okay y'all can catch that. Wait a second. Y'all don't want to shout, okay. I'm talking about the net. This is from net. The net said, well, Okay, how do I explain this to y'all? Uh, in other words, productivity does not define identity. I'm still who I am even when I'm not my best. And you have to stop defining yourself by what you produce because every time you fail, you will connect the failure to your identity instead of a moment in reality. So you're not your failure, you just had a bad day. You're not what you went through. You just had a bad moment. But it doesn't change the fact that I'm still a net. And the success strategy of the net is, guess what? I get to do it again. Mm -hmm. uh, you did not come to church to stay the same. And somebody needs to understand that just because you have not caught anything from January to October does not mean that it's over. Something is about to shift between today and December 31st. And all that is required for you to do is to try Day again, apply again, dream again, love again, pray again, fast again, show up again, tell your neighbor, try again. You cannot allow failure to define your future because there's a future after your failure. So, 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 and for somebody, and for somebody, your last loss was your last loss. I said your last loss was your last loss. Get up and try that thing again. Okay, 
Okay, so 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 that's from the net. First one is the physical service of the net. Second, notice the success strategies of the net. And third, notice the, the supporters of the net. When Jesus rose up to these men and they're washing their nets, they were washing them for two reasons. One, to eliminate the trash and to get ready for the next row. Uh, so they were washing their nets to eliminate all the trash, get everything out that wasn't supposed to be there, and to get ready for the next row. The nets catch everything. Catch what I said? The nets catch everything. I said these are called travel nets. Two boats, one on each side, the boats go parallel, and whatever's in the way, they just swoop it up. All right. All right. Now, don't you think that everything in that net is just fish? That's right. There's some junk yes. in that net. Yes. That's some, okay, how do you say it? So, junk is foolishness. Right. Sometimes when you serve the Lord and you admit some foolishness will get caught up in your net. Not because of what you did, but you're trying to be available for people. So the text says they were washing the nets. The nets catch everything, not just fish, but the debris, the trash, and the garbage. And if nobody loves the net enough to not just use them and help them to uh, stay clean, you will, you, will, you will have nets that are ready for the new day and the new season, uh, but they're filled with trash. Yeah. Yes, sir. Who in your life is using you but not helping you to stay clean. Yeah. Who is it in your life? And, I, and it is went in somebody. That person that's went in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't tell you. Now hear, that, now hear me what I say. I ain't tell you to leave nobody. I ain't tell you. I ain't trying to break up nobody home. Because I don't want nobody to come. Don't you go home and say, Pastor Cobb said you were jump. And you got to get you out of my neck. Don't have no coming up here rolling up on me. Because if they roll up on me, they're going to have to get up off of me. I'm saying, but I ain't weak. The pastor, uh, my wife's home church, he said, you know, then they got baths and stuff. He said, if you see me in a fight with a bath, he said, don't help the bath. Uh, he said, don't help me, uh, help the bath. <laughs> so I tell you, you got to be careful because if you say something to the pulpit, folks go, child, you with pastor said that. He said, I got to clean out my house. Then that man get, that, or that woman get mad and want to come up here ready to fight the preacher. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell y'all with my saved and sanctified and peacemaking self. <laughs> I didn't like what I said. <laughs> Y'all don't me the truth. You don't want no problem. Let me go on here. <laughs> so, so who's in your life that is using you but not helping you to stay clean? So it might be time for you to get some new friends. And some of us are going in circles because of our circles. <laughs> if, if I'm going to be the net that God wants me to be, I got to do what I got to do. And I need some people who care about my preservation and not just their own goals and purposes. It matters who you are connected to. It matters who you are connected to. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. It matters, it matters. who you're connected to. Uh, let me tell you, okay, uh, let me just say it like this. Because uh, cornbread and collard greens, that's a good connection. Uh, uh, crackers, hoop cheese. That's a good connection. Some of y'all say, uh, uh, you know how you made it. Mm -hmm. uh, peanut butter and jelly, good connection. Salt, pepper, good connection. Uh, I got the mic. Grits with butter and salt, good connection. Not sugar. But salt, good connection. When you get the mic, you can say sugar. But uh, neck bones and rice and gravy, good connection. Batman and Robin, good connection. Uh, ladies, good pair of heels and a good pair of flats. Thank God for some good connections. Sometimes God adds by subtracting. Someone listening to me ought to thank God for 
a good connection. Who has been keeping you together. Yes. And uh, mm -hmm. if I don't have nobody else, right. I just want to thank God for Jesus being my good connection. Yes. Mm -hmm. The liars tried to break me. Yes. Critics tried to take me down. Yes. Enemies tried to overconquer me. Right. The half of the supporters
evil. Be glory and majesty 
dominion and power, both now and in.